So basically, uh, what we're doing is an experiment, and I wanted to do a hands on sort of experiment so you could remember all of the treatments and all of the terms that we're using, and then we'll actually do the experiment. And really, our point is not running the experiment the, itself, but designing the experiment and the elements that go into designing a fair experiment. So here's the experiment, as, as probably all of you know. Mentos uh, is a catalyst for soda. Particularly, they use Diet Coke, but we're going to use a variety of different types of soda, so regular just Coke or Pepsi, Diet, uh, Mountain Dew or Mellow Yellow, Sprite of 7-Up, and then uh, soda water. So uh, that's one thing we're going to do is change the type of soda. And then another thing that we're going to do is we're going to try um, one or two candies. And I would have had us trying more, but I think there's a, you know, if you try a whole bunch, you really need a device to drop them in, and I don't have that. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we can drop in two at a time before it explodes on us. And then we're going to look and see, you know, at the difference. And I don't have a yardstick, but I will try to record it, and uh, hopefully we can see uh, the differences between, uh, or maybe some differences. There may not be differences at all, but I would think at least the one or two uh, might make a difference. So uh, I want each person, and we're going to do this individually, and then we'll talk in groups of like three or four. Uh, so tell me what you think in this experiment the experimental unit would be, the explanatory variable, the response variable, and the treatments. And we'll take, uh, you know, a minute or two to do that. Okay, if you'll go ahead and discuss it with groups over the next minute, and then we'll talk about it together as a class. So share with your group members what you put for each answer. And if anybody disagrees, tell them why. So what did everybody think the experimental unit was going to be? The soda. So the soda itself is the stuff we are experimenting on. That is your experimental unit. Oftentimes we've talked about people being the experimental unit, um, and that's usually the case in, in most medical experiments, but it doesn't have to be. It can be some inanimate, or we're going to animate it, um, object that uh, is it's not alive. So, uh, and then the ex, um the explanatory variable, what is that? I'm sorry? The amount of Mentos? Is there anything else? Yes, also the type of soda. So technically we have two explanatory variables here. Does that make sense? Right, but um, the explanatory variable is really the thing that we are changing among the treatments. Um, so all treatments are going to get Mentos combined with soda. Um, different treatments are going to get different amounts of Mentos, and different treatments are going to get different types of soda. So I guess that, you know, normally we've defined explanatory variable as the thing that explains, but here we need to think of the explanatory variable as the category of factors that are happening that change our treatment. So another, uh, we used to call it factors in the old book rather than explanatory variable. The factors, the things that you are varying from experiment to experiment. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the response variable would be the height of the geyser. Um, and I think that's G-E-Y-S-E-R. Okay. Um, so that's the thing that we're going to measure. And we're not going to measure it precisely. But if we were doing uh, a very official sort of experiment, we would try to measure it as precisely as we could. And then uh, I think the hardest part is the treatment. So what did you say? 
the treatments were. How many treatments did you come up with? The number of Mentos that would be placed in the soda, but what about the type of soda? Well, what, it could be thought of as a treatment or it could be thought of as something else, and we'll talk about that. What were you thinking it was in terms of a treatment? Well, an explanatory variable is actually how we define our treatment. So it's the variables that go into defining our treatment. They're not identical. Um, so when we see the real answer, um, but it's how you will set up how you define your treatment. Um, does anybody else have a, a different answer they want to share? Yes. You would cross the two and you would end up with how many treatments? Um, so whenever you have two explanatory variables, uh, you really are best off to put it into a matrix to figure out all of your different so uh, we would have the amount of Mentos um, as either the rows or columns. And then we would have the type of type of soda. Um, so we would have one or two as the amount of Mentos. And then we would have Coke and Diet Coke and Mountain Dew and Sprite and soda water. Um, so, Coke with one, Coke with two, Diet with one, Diet with two, Mountain Dew with one, Mountain Dew with two, uh, Sprite with one, Sprite with two, Soda Water with one, Soda Water with two. So, in the end, we have ten different treatments. One of the reasons I was doing this experiment is because uh, this is probably the most frequently, one of the most frequently missed questions on the midterm exam is telling the amount of treatments or, or getting that right. Um, and it doesn't even ask for amount of treatments. It just asks you to list the treatments out. But knowing that if you have two changing variables that are affecting your treatments, two factors like we do with the amount of Mentos and the type of soda, then we're going to have to have 10 different treatments. Um, and essentially, I, I don't think that we had uh, five volunteers, but I think we had like four. So in our case, we'll probably have eight different treatments. So we'll have eight bottles of soda, and each bottle of soda will be slightly different. Either it will be a different type, or it will get a different amount of Mentos. And so we'll go ahead and uh, go downstairs. Okay, go for it, but do it at the same time, so...